शतांग प्रसंगा goes on to say one is detached from one's own plans i think we covered that part quite exclusively that we know our plans and what krishna's plans hmm? show even people around us don't trust our plans what to speak of krishna uh, many time our plans are just we and our plans you know our plans means we are the center of it <laughs> there's this interesting story of this brahman he used to do all the pujas and everything om fat fat fra fat get everything done and all the mantras and everything and oof everything used to be like oh and uh he was so proud that he was a brahman and mm, i'm so you know brahman caste and i know all the mantras and pujas and everything and until one day he passed on and when he passed on as he entered the kingdom of heaven they said hey rukiye just wait a minute sit down there on the bench you know indian indian heaven right <laughs> so bench and everything is there you have to sit and wait and you know queue is there so population is big in india so you know entry is not so easily especially with covid and everything going on now <laughs> so betiye sit down have a seat put the fan on for him sitting and he's waiting and then one guy comes by with pan in his mouth and he's looking how this guy came here to heaven he looks like a taxi driver or a bus driver something like that dirty looking guy but he came here to heaven and he walked up to the gates and saint peter is there at the gate ha huh? jai vijay and they are saying uh, oh yes please come go through and this brahman lost it he said hey hey what what's going on here i did all the mantras pujas everything followed my whole life doing this uh, work of doing puja for everyone this guy is a kolkata bus driver he just came in like this like that and he's going through and you making me sit under the fan here so how can this be injustice this is our dharma and then jay and vijay explained to hey pandit ji this guy bus driver he would drive the bus from kolkata to mayapur but the way he would drive you know indian road and the way you drive the bus he'll make everybody chant in the bus everybody will go hari bol <laughs> because they knew this could be our last trip they you know bus drivers and you were doing puja and this and this uh, things like a, who who you made chant you just collected your dakshina you collected your things and you got your respect and adoration but this guy was doing sankirtan he made everybody chant in the bus so who is better <laughs> so when we see the world from our perspective we get caught in that 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 must be true it must be real but it's just our interpretation as soon as we realize that my interpretation is wrong because everything about the world we interpreting we interpreting the sound to our ears we interpreting what we seeing through our eyes we interpreting touch everything is interpretation and therefore it cannot be perfect so we have to be careful of this phenomena it goes on to say rest acceptance and peace but not betrayal we feel that maybe the lord has betrayed me when you think of the life story of karna and how you know he was a pious person to a degree in his exhibition but he kept that deep rooted seeded anger when he lost the exhibition when they defamed him that you cannot take part here you are just a, a chariot driver's son hmm? taxi wala son at that time 
So you cannot take part here. We are all Kshatriya princes. We are kings. And you want to take part here? You cannot. So Duryodhan immediately said, No, I'll award him a, a kingdom. So that's the, because of that anger and that hurt was so strong that he supported Duryodhan right through his life. Even though he knew, Kunti even told him at one time that these five Pandavas are your brothers. You are the eldest son. Karna, you are the eldest brother. But his uh, service to Duryodhan because of this unfulfillment, just see how when these things are not addressed, what can happen to somebody's life. Whole lifetime he kept that uh, enmity in his heart. We see here, it goes on to say, this type of surrender has trust in Krishna even when uh, even when things happen differently than expected. Mm. Shushupal was another one who kept deep enmity 100 times, 99 times he, every time he saw Krishna, he would say something bad about Krishna. This crow, mm, this Vaishya born in a village, and he's coming to tell us here, yeah, associating us, with us, the, the, the uh, aristocratic, kingly class of people here. So he had so many bad things to say about Krishna. Eventually, 99 times he cursed Krishna. And the hundredth time Krishna just came and chook, took off his head. So even Krishna can tolerate 99 times of blasphemy uh, upon him. 99 times he tolerated. How many times we tolerated when we had an argument with someone? Maybe once, twice. So the, 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 the lesson is to address the issue. Address it by yourself, within yourself first. If you not accepted it, how do you expect the world to accept it? How do you expect the outside to accept it? So accept it that Krishna means all auspicious. Pavitram paramam bhamam. Arjuna 10.11 he tells, 10.12 he tells in uh, Gita hmm? that uh, param brahman param dhamam pavitram paramam bhavam purusham shashvatam divyam adidevam majam vibhum. Oh Krishna, you are para Brahman, you are the supreme Brahman, param dhaman, you are the supreme abode, pavitram, you are supreme, pure, auspicious. Mm. So Krishna can only do auspicious things, even for the demons. And this is a very nice way to take shelter. Because even the demons got Swarupya Mukti. Each demon that he killed, they all merged into his body. Mm. So for what? For being inimical, for being bad, for doing, for doing vikarmic activities. Because of that, they got such a intimate uh, moksha. So Krishna cannot do bad. So if he gave demons that, and his goal is uh, sadhu pavitra, pavitranaya sadhunam, vinashaya chadriskitam, dharma samstapana thaya sambhavami yuge yuge. I come to do dharma. So can you imagine when people are looking at dharma and saying, you know, the Lord's supposed to be all powerful, but yuge, yuge, is coming every yuga. That means the policies, <laughs> he hasn't got the right policies. Put the right policy in place. How he can be all powerful when whatever he establishes only lasts for one yuga? Then again he has to come and put it. What kind of a policy he's creating? He's not coming for that. That's proof that he's not coming to establish dharma. He's coming for his devotees. Pavitranaya sadhu nam. He's coming for the sadhus. Otherwise he'll look like, what kind of a god is this? He's so fallible. His law only lasts one yuga. It doesn't last more than that. And he has to come again and put, it, put the law right again. And come again and put the law right again. Put it again and again. That means, he, he, how can he be all-powerful? Why can't he just do it one time, set it right one time? But he's not coming for that. He's coming for his devotees. He wants to be with his devotees. And even those who are inimical, he gives them auspiciousness. So if he's doing that by his activities, this is why it's important to read. 
it's important to read bhagavatam read bhagavad gita and see how krishna is interacting so if he's doing that in his interaction with demons and devotees that means in my life also if it's not going my way means he's ordained that and he's seeing it from a b- bigger perspective a stereoscopic perspective i'm seeing it from a myopic perspective and that's why it's not making sense to me it's not working out but his plans is not only global his is cosmic plans so let me trust him let me put my faith at his lotus feet so thank you very much i hope you enjoyed today's class please join us again tomorrow hari krishna